everybody welcome to my chat back to my channel and another uh tutorial this one is of the shiver bag by trixa designs i want to take a moment to thank beatrix for allowing me to do tutorials on her patterns this is a great pattern um yeah so i hope that you enjoy it without further ado let's start the tutorial thanks everybody goodbye okay i got my camera set up kind of weird here Okay, so we are at my cutting table. I just want to go through the pieces we are going to need for this bag, the Shira, uh, Shira bag by Trixis Designs. Again, thank you, Beatrix, for letting me do a tutorial for your patterns. This is uh, going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so let's start hardware-wise, which you're going to need. You'll need your nameplate, if you have a nameplate, or your handmade tag. I'm doing mine just a little bit different in the pattern. She has it so the straps, the hand straps, uh, can come off. They are attached via swivel clips, um, swivel clasps, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make them permanently fixed so they won't be coming off. So if you're doing it as per the pattern, you're going to need six swivel cl swivel clasps. Um, I'm only going to need two for the crossbody strap because that's the part that I want to be able to come on and off. Um, if you're following the pattern, you're going to use six D rings uh, because I'm doing my handbag straps a little bit different. I'm using four rectangular rings and two D rings for the crossbody strap. I also have four strap-ins, two number five zipper pulls, and five purse feet. Now the pattern calls for eight D-rings. I don't know what the extra two are for, if that's a typo or if I missed something reading through the pattern. This is the second one I made, but I made the other one uh, a few months ago so I don't remember what I did so we may need two more d-rings we will find out as we go through all right so for cutting you're going to need to cut four corner accent pieces two and two two will be mir mirrored to the pattern so when you're cutting it you'll do two on the right side two on the wrong side another thing I'm going to do with these because this curve side is left raw on the vinyl and we're going to be top stitching it on. I'm actually going to take this uh, to my cork paint station and I'm going to use my Giardin um, edge coat paint and just paint these curved corners on all of these red just so they don't, just because my backing is white, I don't want it to show. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. If you'll need those, you're going to need bottom panel, exterior, and aligning. Now, I haven't cut out the foam for these. You will need further on in the pattern, you'll be cutting, well, she uses fleece in the pattern. I'm using foam. You could use Decaville Light if that's what you prefer. It's just whatever you prefer, but I'm gonna be using Biani Soft and Stable, so in foam. So, um, yeah, that'll be later on. I don't have that cut out right now. I am using waterproof canvas for my lining, so I don't have to interface it, but if you are using cotton, you'll wanna use a, a uh, medium woven interfacing like SF 101 or woven fuse or fashion fuse or what have you. So one of each of those pieces. Two pieces for your straps. And you're going to cut out four side panels. Two of your lining. Again, that can be interfaced. Um, with woven if you're not using the waterproof canvas and two side panels again these will have the interfacing added later on as well and we'll go through that as we get through the thing I just kind of do that later on rather than cutting it right now um, four one two three four these are of your front straps the decorative straps there uh, a slip pocket accent this isn't in the pattern, but for my interior pocket, I'm gonna do um, a zipper facing for it. Now on the Trixis Designs website, I believe if you go in, she's got 
a free template for her style of these. If you decided you want to do that, I'm going to also do a tutorial on how I do this inner zipper pocket because it's a little different than the other one I have on, on YouTube right now. Two accent strips. The zipper panel, you're going to need two exterior and two lining. You're going to need two lining fabric. Again, if you're using cotton, make sure you back this with the woven interfacing. This is, I don't have it fused yet. This is my crossbody strap. I had to cut it into pieces. So I'll be taking it to the machine and sewing it on a bias and then attaching uh, the woven interfacing. I'm using this as my interior slip pocket material. This is also my outside um, main panel material, but two slip pocket pieces. Two front panels. This is cotton, so I do have it backed with a uh, medium weight woven interfacing. Facing. I cannot talk today. So I am using a Fashion Fuse, which I buy at cleanersupply.ca. You can buy, use SF101. You can use um, Woven Fuse, whatever you like. Two connectors for the crossbody strap. And it calls for two pieces for the zipper panel on the end or the zipper lining on the inside I've cut it into just one long one you'll see why when I uh, go through and do that because the interior zipper pocket I'm going to do slightly different than what is in the pattern so that is all that you will need to do the Shiva bag by Trixis Designs so I'm going to go ahead off camera I am going to edge coat my little pieces um, let that dry I am going to construct my handles, my two handles, and my crossbody strap. Again, I don't walk through that. It's the same as uh, any other bag that I've pretty much been doing. If you go to my Bag Makers 101 playlist, you will see the tutorials on how I do construct uh, my crossbody straps and my regular straps. Now, for the straps, when you're doing them, if you are doing them the same as the pattern make sure you follow the pattern instructions to attach the swivel clasps to them i am not doing that in this tutorial mine are going to be permanently fixed to the bag so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then we will come back and we will start constructing the exterior main panel all right so let's get started so i went ahead off camera and i put on my i i did my handbag straps uh, and I also added these decorative strap ends. Again, this is different than what the pattern calls for. If you're following the pattern, what you're going to do instead of putting these straps, well, you could put those on, I guess, if you wanted to, but you would take a, let's see if I got one here. I don't have one here. You would take your swivel clasp and you would put it over top of this and fold it over like that and then rivet it. And you would do that on all four ends. That's what you would do if you're following the pattern. I'm permanently fixing them to the bag. I don't want these straps to be able to come off. So um, I'm doing them a little bit different. So I did both my straps and I also did my crossbody strap. So if you're unsure of how to do this, I do have um, a tutorial on these in my bag makers 101 playlist so go check out that playlist and it's it'll walk you through exactly what you need to do okay so our next step is we want to make the decorative straps that are on the front and the back of the bag i've gone ahead and done three already so you're starting with your two by seven piece uh, there's a line down the middle you'll want to mark a line down the middle of it and then put some double-sided tape there and then fold the long edges into that line. And this is creating a one inch piece rather than a two inch piece now, but hiding those raw edges. Just like so. So then you have all four of those. You can put them aside until the next step. You also wanna go ahead, and I did these already, is your connector straps for the cross body strap are exactly the same way. You're gonna uh, draw the line down the middle, put the tape down there, fold the long edges in, and then you're going to top stitch on each side with a 1 8th of an inch seam allowance. Once that's done, 
you're going to take your D-rings and you're going to slip it on. Oops, I got some threads here. And just clip the ends together like that and then put them aside for now. We will need those later on. Just like so. So go ahead and get that ready and I'm gonna get the next pieces ready to move on to the next step. All right, yeah, I just noticed you can see my Baby Yoda shirt. Oh, I love Baby Yoda. Anyways, I know, not part of the tutorial. So the next step, what we wanna do, this is what we're gonna be trying to accomplish. So you're going to need your front and back main panels and your four overlay pieces. These are the ones that I coated the rounded sides with um, Giardin edge coat or edge paint. And that's just so you can see on these other sides how it would be white, but now it's red. So um, I like that just because you don't have that raw and it seals that raw edge in nicely too. So um, yeah, I definitely recommend doing that. You can, there's all sorts of different kinds of edge paint you can use. Okay, so these are a little hard to tell, especially if you're not using a directional fabric, if it's top or bottom, but these will only fit on that straight edge. So you can see how that one's going to fit there, but it definitely would not fit there. So I have the right side up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some double-sided tape. Again, I love double-sided tape. If you're using a domestic machine, try to keep it out of the top stitch line so it doesn't gum up your needle too much. My machine just whizzes right on through it. It doesn't, it's, it handles it pretty good. So I'm pretty lucky that way. But I am using an industrial. And this is really sticky tape. Holy moly. Stuck my finger. Okay. And then what you're going to do once you can get the tape off, is you're going to line up this edge and this edge and this along the top right in that corner. This is when I get to see how well I did cut my pieces. Oops. the other side. Okay, so now we got those two. So now I'm going to take these to the machine and around this curved edge, you're going to top stitch it with a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to go ahead and with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just base down these sides just to make sure it stays in place. So go ahead and do that. And then we will come back and we will put on uh, the decorative straps. Okay, so the top stitching, can you see it there, is all done along that curved edge. Take it nice and slow so you get a nice top stitch. Turned out pretty good. Okay, then you want to pull out your four decorative straps from the front. And what we're going to do is um, from one short end, I'm doing the medium bag. So I'm going to measure down from the top of one of the short ends, one and three eighths. One, two, three. One, two, three. And draw a line with my chuckle. I'm just using a clover chuckle. Um, size. And then from that line, you want to go three quarters of an inch down, like so. And so what we're going to do is in between those lines, just in between these lines, we're going to just... I don't know that one. <laughs> my Alexa has a mind of her own. Um, you're just going to top stitch just from that line to this line on both sides just from there to there and there to there. So depending what size of the bag you are making, that measurement will be different. I have said mine is a medium. So it's uh, one and three eighths from the top and then um, three quarter of an inch 
after that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on all four and then we will come back. Okay, so for the next step, this is what we're going to be doing is attaching the straps and I'll show you how we got to this point. Okay, so you've gone ahead and you've done your little, um, just short little top stitches there. We're going to use this line. This was that uh, three quarter inch line down from that one and three eighths line um, as a guide here. So what we want to do is on the bottom part of these, so underneath that line, we want to put some double sided tape. Like so. And we're going to take our um, front panel. And you can see here it's marked where our straps are. So I've gone ahead and I make these little slits at those lines on both sides. It just makes it easier to mark your fabric. So I am taking a friction pen. I'm only going to mark within the seam allowance. Let's try to give you a better angle here. So you're going to lay it along your pattern piece, line it up, and then just in those little marks, put two little marks. And this is where we're going to line up our strap. So you can see, can you see, where is it? Right here. You might not be able to see it right there. And then the same with the other sides. So you're going to put this upside down. Oop, what am I doing? Fold. There we go. So line it up and then put the marks like so. Now it's very important that the top of the strap here is pretty much aligned with the top there. There may be a little bit of a gap on the bottom here between this. I don't know if it's because I cut mine too short or what, but mine will fall a little bit shorter. But that's okay because it'll get caught within the seam allowance. So you're going to take off your paint or your tape and along the top between those two lines we just drew, you're going to align that there and align this with the other ones like that and press the tape down. Oops, it's very important this is aligned at the top. So you wanna make sure, and put a clip there and then align it down here. Yeah, I must've cut mine about a quarter of an inch too short. But we have a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so it'll catch that. Okay, so as long as it's lined up along the top, I have a little bit left at the bottom here, but it's gonna get caught in that seam allowance. So I'm not worried about that. And then you're gonna do the same with the other piece. Line it up between those lines. The mailman must be here. Please ignore Coco if she keeps barking. And then align this with those marks down at the bottom. Like so, and press that double-sided tape down. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go up one edge here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Come all the way up, put your needle down into where our stitching ended here, pivot, go across that line, and then back down the other side on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will come back. All right, so I went ahead and did the next step so I can show you what we are going to be attempting to do. I wish my lighting was better in here, but it's not. You can see how we have, um, this is the stitching we just did, and then we have another one here, and it's enclosing this uh, rectangular ring. In the pattern, this will be a D-ring, because this would be what the swivel clasps um, hook onto, but as I said, I'm gonna make it a fixed handle, so I use rectangular rings. So I'll show you how we get to this. All right, so what you wanna do is make sure that you still have that one and three eighths mark. Uh, if it has rubbed away, make sure you put it again. It's a great guide to help get a straight line. At the very, very top of these, you want to put a small amount of double-sided tape. Take your rectangular ring or your D-ring and you're gonna put it down as far as it'll go against that um, stitching that we had previously done. Take off the double-sided tape 
and align that along the top like so do the same with the other side okay and then what we're going to do is take it to the machine we're going to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance down here pivot go across that line and back up that side and that is going to lock that in place so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back all right so i recorded this video once already this part but for some reason it didn't record sound so here we go again <laughs> um so i went ahead and did the next step to show you what we are going to achieve in this step this is the finished panel it may look a little bit wrinkly when you're done but you got to realize we got to attach this to the foam and my vinyl is a little bit stretchy so we will fix that when we baste it to the foam so i'll show you how we get to the step so what you want to do i said i already did this once so i'll just show you what i did so you want to mark the centers of your main panel and your accent panel and all i do is i fold it in half and then I make a little snip. Now, another thing I did is along this curved edge, I went around and I made little one eighth of an inch snips about every quarter inch or so. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help us get it around this curve. And I'll show you why. This is a little bit awkward, but, so you wanna lay your pieces down like this. You're gonna take this one, you're gonna put them right sides together. And you see this one curves out where this one curves up and we have to match up those raw edges. That's where those little slits are gonna help. So match up those that center spot, clip it, and then work your way around, matching those raw edges all the way around. Use lots of clips to hold it in place. And you can see that's what those little uh, notches do. They just make it easier to distribute that fabric all the way around going that curve. Now this part is where it gets a little bit tricky and a little awkward. So you just wanna keep pulling that vinyl down like this and matching it with the raw edge of the main panel. Like so. It does not wanna go there. It is not a natural feel for the fabric to do that but we will make it do it then go ahead and do the other side oopsies there we go And we've come to that part where it's a little bit awkward again. I'm trying to make it so you can see this a little better. And then just pull the vinyl with those little slots kind of down to match this curve like this. Like so. So you can see it is it is not a pretty looking thing but it'll do I find because you want to make sure when you're sewing this which we are going to sew it with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance you want to make sure that you don't have any knits or, or tucks so I actually use the stiletto and I make sure everything goes nice and flat as I do each stip, stitch go real slow make sure there are no nips and tucks now while I'm at the machine I'm going to do this as well say this is all sewn together okay what you're going to do next is you're going to take this panel and you're going to fold it down. So that means that the seam, the seam is going to be going this way towards the bottom of the bag. So you're going to push that down, finger press it, and then you're going to top stitch all along the accent panel all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to attach this to the foam. Okay, so we have our panels all done. Now we need to attach it to the foam. And this is why I do this different than the pattern too. You could have cut all your pieces out via the pattern piece, but I find that this saves a step. So I'll show you what I do. Um, I take my piece of foam, I take my piece, and I start by finding an edge and clipping it there. 
And then I'm going to cut the foam out as we go along. So I'm going to start with this edge. Cut it up like so. Grab my clips. Pull it nice and taut. And this is where it's going to get rid of my wrinkles I have on my vinyl here because you can see my vinyl has some stretch to it. So I'm going to accommodate that here. Clip your foam on. Go down the other edge here. So I'm just using my, my pieces that I have made. Almost like my pattern piece to cut everything out. Um, if you're on a domestic, you may want to keep this out of your seam allowance. I'm using sew-in foam. Um, so it's kind of hard to do that because it's not fused on. Uh, you could use double-sided tape or what have you to do that, but I don't worry about it in my in my seam allowance. My machine can handle it. So, but I'm pulling it. You can see how like that. It's kind of loose, and if I just give it a slight little tug, it pulls it nice and taut and tight. We'll go down the other side. Pull it nice and tight. out all those wrinkles. <laughs> if you need to, you can readjust your clips. I got a little bit more here. I got to kind of stretch out. here too. And there we go. That looks pretty good to me. So what you do next is you take this to your machine and you just baste it to the foam with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do that for the other front panel the bottom panel, I've actually gone ahead and already put in my purse feet. I did add a piece of Decaville Heavy onto the back outside of the seam allowances just to give the bottom a little bit more stability. So I added that in. And then you're also going to add foam to the two exterior pieces. So go ahead and, and attach your foam or your fleece or your Decaville Light Whatever you're going to be interfacing your bag with, do that now, um, whether it's feasible or sew-in or whatever. And then when we come back, we will put the exterior together. Okay, so we have all of our pieces, exterior pieces attached to foam. Um, I went ahead and put my nameplate on, as well as these aren't part of the pattern, but for extra stability or to give a little more, um, a little more support for the straps, I like to add two rivets here about half inch up and down from each of the stitch lines. So I did that on both panels. Okay, so now what our next step is, trim some of this foam up a little bit. We wanna attach our side panels and our bottom panels. My foam is just squeezing over a little bit. Okay, 
So you're going to take them and put them right sides together and clip. Okay, and we're going to sew along there at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. When that's done, we're going to open it up and we're going to push the, the seam towards the bottom panel and then secure it in place with a top stitch along here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with both sides, 3 eighths of an inch, top stitch along the bottom panel, making sure that your seam is facing the bottom panel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back and then we will attach it to the other parts of the bag. So this is our bottom all done. I top stitched along the bottom panel and you can see that secures these facing into the center. I also went ahead, the next step is to actually do that with the lining pieces as well. So I have attached them and top stitched them and we can put all those pieces aside for now. And the next thing to do is we're going to construct our slip pocket. I actually am going to do my slip pocket just a little bit different. Um, in the pattern, it calls for putting the right sides together, sewing along the top three eighths of an inch, flipping them around, and then um, it has a different way of, of putting this on it as well. I, I'm going to skip a step and I think this way is just faster. So to accommodate that three eighths of an inch, if these were put together, I did cut three eighths of an inch off of the straight edge, just so my slip pocket wasn't too tall. So I'm going to take one, put it right side down. I am going to grab my double sided tape. Again, if uh, you have a uh, domestic machine, you may want to follow the pattern and do it her way. Uh, this way, I just feel that it's a little bit faster for me. So I'm going to put this all along the top. Take the paper off that. Take the other one, put them wrong sides together and match up that raw edge. Like so. like I overcut this I'm just going to trim this down so they match okay so we have that raw edge all along the top there wrong sides together so then you're going to take your slip pocket accent piece and we're going to draw a line right down the middle so this is one and a half inches so we're going to do a line at three quarters of an inch down I wish I, where did my other pen go? I am not having luck with pens. know where my marking pen went okay it's very faint but I promise it is there okay and then you want to take your double-sided tape again and on one on just below that line we just drew you want to put some double-sided tape like so And then we're going to take our slip pocket panel and we are going to line this up with that middle line that we drew. So this is going to enclose that raw edge. Like so. Okay, and then we want to take, I know, it's a lot of double-sided tape. Put some along the top edge of this. And 
And this might not be the method with a domestic machine if your machine does not like double-sided tape, but this is how I like to do it. So we're doing it this way. Okay. And then we are going to fold this over that raw edge like so. And I'm folding it right where the fabric meets that middle line. Just like that. So on both sides there. So this side will be down a little bit longer, it looks like. So that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch right along that raw edge there. And then we're going to top stitch along the top edge, making sure we're catching it on the back as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. Okay, so that's done. We've got the top stitching all along both sides. Then you're going to take your lining piece, main lining piece, and you're going to lay this down, match up the edges. Actually, first you want to kind of make a fold mark here because we're going to separate this into two slip pockets. The pattern calls for three, but I think for this size, it's just going to be too small. Line up the raw edges. So yeah, you could put two pockets here. So you have three pockets in all. I'm just doing one straight down the middle. So I'll have two larger slip pockets. So then I'm going to go and I'm going to base this pocket onto here and then I'm also going to do of the center mark here I'm going to go up an eighth of an inch up one side come across and go an eighth of an inch down the other side of that central line you probably can't see it it's kind of like where this is to make the two slip pockets so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be back okay I just tidied up my work area a little bit it's crazy how cluttered an area gets as you're working on a bag okay so this is the slip pocket so I have two pockets here if you look where I did the two lines right in between those two lines at the top I like to put a rivet there and that's just because that is going to be a high stress spot and I just think it gives a little bit more stability so that is what the slip pocket side looks like now we're going to work on the zipper pocket side uh, the zipper pocket side again I'm doing it a little different than the pattern I am hooked on doing uh, my zipper pockets now with a uh, with the zipper facing on top, a decorative zipper, zipper facing. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna grab your other exterior li or lining panel. And then it says two and three quarters from the top. I'm gonna to match this up with my four inch line because that is going to be I've already actually I'm getting ahead of myself I've already folded in half to show where my centers are while I'm at it I'm just going to do little snips because that's going to be making it easier next time I always mean to go and mark my centers before I start making the bag and I always forget not the end of the world if you do though Okay, so this is my zipper facing. I know that my zipper facing that I use is eight inches. So the middle part is four inches. So I'm gonna take my ruler and on the center line here, I'm gonna mark it with my four. And it says we want to put it, let me see, let me see, two and three quarters down from the top. We're going to put it right there so from the top to here is two and three quarters i'm going to take my zipper facing and along about in the actually about in the middle because we don't want it to show we're going to put a little bit of double-sided tape along the top and along the bottom Okay. 
take off your tape of just one side like so and because I know this is eight inches long and the four is in the center I can just use my ruler to place this on so stick that double-sided tape up against the ruler like oops like that and press it down so it's going to be nice and center now the best way of doing this is it'll fall once we take that tape off if we just let it go it's going to fall naturally to where we need this to be so we're going to take the tape off and just let it drop and then flatten it down so it looks like that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and top stitch along this top outside raw edge all the way around not the center one just the top one all the way around and then i will show you the next step okay so i've done that i have top stitched all the way around the outside edge now what we're going to do is i just take my rotary cutter make sure you don't cut the vinyl part but just cut into the center part like so so you have your hole here and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and we are going to cut up behind this. So you may have to pull it a little bit to get some of that tape to stop sticking. Find an area and just cut it up, flip it over. You can see here, we are just going to cut it away without going over the stitches, of course. Like so. Again, you may have to pull it up from the tape to unstick it to get in where you want to go, but you want to go up about a quarter of an inch or so from that zipper facing with the oak cutting that zipper facing. So you're kind of getting up and underneath it like that. This is a nice way because you don't actually have to press anything and you always end up having really nice corners um, that aren't affected by stitching with the other way of doing the zipper pocket. And it just really adds that nice decorative touch to your bag. Even though it is the lining, you could do this on the exterior as well. If you had his exterior zipper pocket. Again, make sure you're not cutting that vinyl facing. You're cutting underneath it. And sometimes that tape gets in the way. And it looks like it's a hack job, but do you know what? You're not going to see this. It's going to be under the zipper tape, so... It's okay. It doesn't have to be neat and pretty at all. There you go. As you can see, it's not super pretty, but that's okay. And then take some more double-sided tape and put it, this will be for future step, put it along about an eighth of an inch away from that raw edge of that zipper facing. Like so. Okay, now you can put that aside for a moment and you want to grab your zipper and your pocket piece, your pocket lining piece. So I use zipper by the yard. So I did my zipper just about an inch and a half longer than it needs to be. So I can pull the pull out of the way at this step. And I just put some stitches on the end just to make sure my pull doesn't fall off. Okay, so what we want to do is take, I said the pattern, or you can have this in two pieces as well. I like to start this way. I think it's just easier to cut. So with right side facing up, you want to take some double-sided tape, put it along the top, like so. Take 
the paper off of the tape. Come on. Okay. And then you're going to take your zipper pull. I'm going to pull my pull all the way to the end because I want it to hang off. So it'll just make it easier for sewing with it out of the way. And so you have them, the zipper right side up on the lining piece, which is also right side up. So you want to stick this to that tape like so. And that's just interfacing I have hanging off. So I'll just trim that up. Okay, and then you're going to go and base this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so that is done. You can see it because I'm actually using a very contrasting thread. So now what we want to do is we want to flip it over like this and then put some double-sided tape along the other short end of the pocket. Like this. Again, I have some overhang of interfacing, so I'm just cutting that away. Okay. So take that tape off. And then you're going to bring the other raw edge of the zipper tape up and match it along that edge as well as matching our sides to make sure that they are even. So you're putting it along like that. If you don't want to use double-sided tape, you can you can use clips as well, or pins, whichever you prefer. So it's like that. And I'm going to go and I'm going to base this to this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance as well. Okay, so that is done. So the next thing I do before I do my next step is... I kind of place this where the zipper is going to be and see how long this is going to be. Um, it's obviously, I cut it way too long. So I'm actually going to take off about that much off the bottom to make an open end on the bottom. So I think that was about two inches. I'm going to go two and a quarter inches. Like so. So then now we can open this up like this. I'm going to take this to my iron quickly and just press the seam open right now. Be right back. Okay, as so my area gets more and more cluttered here. Now, what we're going to do next is I like my zipper pull to close to the left, so I want to make sure I have it so it's on the correct side. I'm going to take my double sided tape off of the back of my pan, uh, lining panel here. fighting with my double-sided tape. There we go. And then I'm going to line that up, making sure my zipper is nice and center. Like so. And you also want to make sure that your pull is now inside, like that. So adjust, and when you have it where you think it's going to look good, so you have one lining panel going this way and the other one going the opposite way. Like that. And then you're going to go along this inner 
and you're going to do a top stitch all the way around to secure that zipper tape to the lining panel. Okay, so that top stitching is done all the way around that center panel. And you can see if we were to fold these away where we cut away the lining, you can't even see it. Okay, so now what the next step is, is to flip it over, bring this side down, and this is going to be longer, mainly, because this piece went up higher. So you're going to trim them up to make them even. And then because I like to turn, um, be able to pull my lining when it comes to turning the bag, the bottom up through the pocket, I'm going to leave the pocket open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this up about an inch. And clip it. And then trim your zipper tape up to match the pocket. And then clip these sides evenly up together. And then take this to the machine and you're going to fold the lining panel out of the way and you're going to sew up these sides to close up the pocket. But you're not sewing along this bottom edge and I'll show you why in a moment. So go ahead, fold it up this way, do this side, fold it up this way and do this side. All right, so we're all sewed up the sides there. So you can take the clip off of here and this is uh, the hole that we're going to turn the bag through. If you're doing a bag where you're not turning it through the pocket, you can definitely sew this and seal it shut. But most of my bags, I turn through the pocket. So because we sewed this fold over, now what we can do is we can kind of flip it out, inside out like this, press those edges, and then we have an already nice seam to sew up at the end when we close up that opening in the bag. So that's really cool. And there we go. We have a fully functioning zipper pocket. Okay, so we're pretty much done with our lining. We have our slip pocket panel. We have our zipper pocket panel, leaving the bottom open of the pocket. And we have our gusset. So now we can put this aside and we're gonna work on our zipper panel. Okay, so at the beginning, I said you only needed three zipper pulls. Uh, three works if you want to only do a, a single uh, pull for the top. I've decided to do a double one, so I added another zipper pull in there. Again, I use zipper by the yard. I keep mine a little bit longer because when I'm doing these, I want to be able to keep my zipper pulls out of the way of the sewing so I don't get any lumps or bumps. Um, if you're talented enough that you can leave the zipper pulls off and put them on later, definitely go and do that. I do not have that talent. I cannot get them on evenly when I do that. So I just keep my tape a little bit longer, push them off to the side and bring them in when I need to. Okay, so you're going to need your zipper. You're going to need your, it's not quite even there, oops, your lining pieces and your exterior pieces. You are also going to need, I like to use the 1 8th of an inch tape for this. You can use clips as well. I said I am a double-sided tape junkie, so I'm going to use it. Now the reason I use the 8th of an inch, uh, I apologize for my dogs, um, is I know that it won't be seen outside uh, the um, seam allowance for sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the lining, lay it down, and put this down on the right side of the lining, one of the lining panels, like so. And I'm also going to take an exterior one and do the same thing just on one of the long edges. Again, you can use clips instead of this, not a big deal. Okay, 
take your lining, take the tape off, and then see how it hangs over? That is okay, we're gonna trim that up later, but I just want these to hang off. So I'm gonna line up that edge with the wrong side of my zipper. So it's the right side of the lining to the wrong side of my zipper. Like so. And you can go and baste that right now, but I'm going to skip a step and do two at the same time. So take the tape off the top of that one and you're going to line up the two panels like so. You want them to be even and put the exterior zipper panel right side together with the zipper tape. Now be very careful not to stretch your zipper tape. Otherwise you end up with a wavy zipper and that's never a good thing. I mean, it'll still work, but. All the way across. And if you've cut things properly, they should line up pretty good. And they're not bad. My lining is like an eighth of an inch longer, but that's okay. Okay, and then what does it tell me to do? Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on my zipper foot. And I'm going to sew these together with a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then I'll come back. All right, so I have, I feel like I'm on a leash with my cord here gone and done that three eighths of an inch. I did use my zipper foot. It does help to get close and you do want to leave. Um, yeah, you, you do want to use your zipper foot for this one. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we want to push our exterior and I'm actually going to take, I have just this little seam press roller thing because I'm using vinyl. If you're using cotton, you can definitely go ahead and press this but you want to push the lining panel and the exterior panel together. I'm actually gonna use a few clips just to kind of help pull it into place. So I'm using the waterproof canvas and the vinyl is very stiff. that lining is pulled away from the zipper as far as it can go before we top stitch it. Okay, and then I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to just top stitch all the way down this side. Do not sew this side. Do not baste it because we need these panels to be able to be free of each other for when we attach the lining in the exterior. So just top stitch along this line here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that is done. That is all top stitched and now we are going to repeat it with the other two panels. So put your double sided tape Oops, not that double, the one eighth of an inch double sided tape. Quarter inch would probably work too because it is a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Depending how close you can get to that three eighths with your zipper foot, I guess would be what would matter. <clears throat> I apologize if you can hear the TV upstairs in the background. My son is home now and he's watching TV up there. I don't think my mic will pick it up, but if it does, I apologize. Okay. So lining right side up, zipper right side up. And what we want to make sure is that we are matching the panels up so they're even. Okay. 
looks about right weight there. Again, try not to stretch your zipper tape if you can avoid it. Push that down and you can see how the lining pieces line up pretty good with one another. Okay, and then take your next piece and lay it on top, right sides together, the zipper and the exterior piece. Line it up with the raw edge and press it down. Like so. You can see how keeping the zipper pulls out of the way, it just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to be moving the zipper pulls in and out or anything like that. So it works better. All right, so I'm gonna go and sew along there with three eighths of an eight three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna flip the wrong sides together and top stitch that side. Okay, so that is done. Now I did make a little bit of a mistake. It'll be fine. It's not a big deal. But usually I trimmed my zipper tape. Usually you wanna leave like at least a half inch uh, just to anchor it in. Yeah, I did not do that, but it'll be fine. Okay, so the next step we wanna do is we want to take our D-rings that we made earlier, our crossbody connectors. I'm just going to double check, place them into the seam allowance. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to have them overhang just like by half an inch or so like that. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to use my double-sided tape again. <laughs> So I want to hold them together. You could take them to the machine and sew them as well, but I want these ends to stay together. So I am just going to, I'm sorry for my dogs. <clears throat> take my tape and stick these ends together just to hold them in place well. Okay, and then I'm just using my table here. I've put these up to a one inch mark and I want this end to hang over about Half inch, I think. Is that what it says? I like those that way. Say. Probably be a little bit less. I made mine a little bit longer than they should be. I'm going to do it there. At about, I'm going to let it overhang about three quarters of an inch. Okay, and you want to make sure that it's kind of center with your zipper here. So then when you got it to where you want it to be, clip it in place. And do the same with the other side. Line it up. Kind of let it overhang about. Half inch or three quarters of an inch. Yeah, that should be good. Clip that in. Okay. Now I'm going, you can see how they're centered. Now I'm gonna go and base these. Now we're getting into the hard part of this bag. It's completely doable. Um, it's a new process for me. But it's very, very important that on these side panels, we are not stitching into what will be our 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on this side. So we're going to base this across just slightly over maybe, like an eighth of an inch over, base them. I'm actually gonna go back and forth a couple times, a little bit into the seam allowance or whatever, uh, just because I cut that zipper really short. So I just wanna make sure it's really, really stable. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do that. I think I will do um, probably like just under a quarter inch and then an eighth of an inch just to uh, solidify those. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we will be back. But do not go into where the seam allowance will be on the side. Very, very important. Okay, so now we're getting on to the hard part. Um, if you <laughs> need to take a break, this would be a good time to take a break because this next 
few steps right to the end are are pretty involved and uh, and aren't um they're they're somewhat easy but not a little bit a little bit awkward but the end result is amazing so it is definitely worth it okay so we have our zipper panel i have these all attached our d-rings um what we want to do now is we want to take our exterior gusset and we want to line it up with this with the side here and they should be the same length which mine are definitely leave some of this hanging over So we are going to go and sew these with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, what's really important is when we sew this, we actually, do you know what I'm going to do? It doesn't say to do this, but I think it's just going to really help me out. So on these short sides here, we're going to mark in 3 eighths of an inch. So we know one, two, three. We know exactly where we want to stop our stitching because we want to keep that three eighths open for when we, you'll see, when we get to the last thing, last part. Um, okay, so right sides together. Make sure your D-ring is out of the way. Clip them together. And you can see we have the lining here as well. So this is what I mean. So. We are going to sew these together at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but you're going to only go, you're not going to go past these 3 eighths lines that we made on each side. We're only going to go in between them because when we go to sew, we need to keep all the seam allowances open for when we do the rest of the bag. So just sew in between 3 eighths to 3 eighths to keep it within the seam allowance and then go ahead and do that with the other side as well and then come back and we will uh, do the same with the lining panel. Okay, so that is done. You will see what I mean, how I kept the seam out of the seam allowance. And the reason for that is, for this panel here, we're gonna be attaching the linings together and the exteriors together. So we're actually gonna have them coming out this way. So we have to have access to that seam allowance in order to connect the lining and the other to it. Now, something that isn't in the pattern, which I am going to do at this stage, is I'm just going to flip this out. And for these, I'm all about stability. I want to put a rivet in here to secure this, just to make sure that it takes some of the uh, stress off of these for the crossbody strap. So I am going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put rivets right about there on both sides. And then you're going to do the exact same thing with the lining panels. I'd mark three eighths on each side or actually what you could do rather than mark it, you can pin it and then just go back over the stitching we did there to attach the lining. And then what we're going to end up having is it'll be attached all like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do those rivets and then I'm going to put on the gusset of the lining and then we'll come back and we'll do the main panel. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. So we have our exterior on this side and our lining on this side. So we are going to work at assembling our lining first. The exterior will go together the same way. It's just easier to do it with the lining first. So you want to make sure that you have your zipper open. I guess you don't have to just yet, but you will want it. Um, you have to decide. I guess it doesn't matter because the zipper pull opens both ways. Never mind. Okay. As I have things flying everywhere. This part stresses me out about this bag, but it is going to be worth it. So I already found the, the centers of my bottom panel here. I got to do it with the lining. So I'm just going to quickly put the seams together and snip my centers. Again, if you could not do what I do and actually remember to do this when you cut the pieces, um, it does help a lot, but I always forget. Okay, so concentrating on the lining, you're gonna take one of your lining panels and you're going to match up that center there.
and clip it around. You are going to take the corner here and the corner here. And this is why we didn't sew right through the seam allowance. And we are going to match that corner just like that. Kind of like when we do Y seams on the exterior, on um, bottoms of bags, I guess. So clip that there. And I put another clip there just to kind of solidify that. And then I'm also going to do it on the zipper panel. See how they come apart? So clip it there as well. I think it's good to do the two top corners before we try to get the rest to go. So we're going to clip it. I apologize for my barking dog again. And the zipper panel there. So the hardest part is going to be sewing around the zipper panel because there really isn't that much space there, but we will get it done. Um, if I had been smart, I would have marked the centers on my zipper panels, but I'm just going to pull it tight and pull it down. Center should be right about there. If I have to adjust, I will. Okay, so I'm going to clip my zipper panel. You're pushing the exterior part out of the way because right now we're just concentrating on the lining. So I'm actually going to put another clip right here like that and then the side here pushing that exterior out of the way. The good news about this is we don't have to do any top stitching when the bag's done. So <laughs> sometimes top stitching can be a pain and this is kind of a pain, but this is just a really good way to get a good shape. Okay, so we have that top all done. Now we want to evenly distribute this down. So I'm going to do a couple down the side here to the corner. I'm going to go up this side here. Okay, now you can see how the gusset is too small. So I'm actually just going to put a few snips to be able to, with like a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch around that curve so we can spread that fabric out and it can make that curve for us. See, now that that's happened, we can just push this up and it will meet that curve like that. We are so close to being done. So close. Okay, so we got that side. It's all good. Now we're going to do this opposite side here. And it's good to have the line. It's just easier to do it with the lining first and it gives you a little bit of practice before you do it with the exterior because we're going to repeat this exact same thing with the exterior. Okay, so again, the gusset doesn't quite fit. So we're just going to do a couple snips in the gusset where that corner is so we can distribute that fabric around. It's making a straight line go to a curved line. I apologize for Coco barking in the background. It's almost her, her supper time and she is letting my son know it. So. <laughs> okay, so distribute that. Okay, so that is done. I'm going to take that to the machine and we are going to sew that together with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. When we get to this gusset area, 
you're going to pull this out of the way and just sew along the lining. I'm going to go do that and then come back. I'm going to feed my dogs and then uh, we'll come back and put the other, line, other liner on. Okay, so that first part is done. It actually wasn't that bad at all. My first one I made, I struggled with. I think I got it with the second one, so it's good. So you just kind of look inside your lining, make sure there is no holes. It all looks pretty good to me. Look how good that looks, it's so pretty. Okay, now we're gonna take the other lining piece and we are going to put it right sides together like this. Again, this is our exterior out here. We're going to mark our centers. Um, one thing we are gonna do different with this one is we are going to leave a gap for turning. So I'm gonna say from about there to there. So we're gonna leave a good portion of the bottom unsewn so we can turn it um, once we have it all together. So what I like to do is I like to take my red wonder clips and put two right beside each other, like so, so I know that I need to, oops, I need to stop at that point and leave that open. Okay, so again, we're gonna take the corner and match it with the corner here. And clip it. And then the top of our zipper panel. So the zipper panel is the only um, awkward thing, but if you leave enough of a seam allowance there, you should be fine. So you can see there, it kind of is like a Y shape, I guess. And then same with on the other side. And it's easiest to, to sew it with the, um, the main panel against the bed of the machine. I am dropping wonder clips everywhere. Okay, so again, we're pulling it away. And clipping, pulling the exterior away. It is easier to do it with the zipper open. I find it just gives you a little bit more give for the uh, zipper panel here. I need a drink of water. Excuse me for one second. you can see there again completely separate we will attach the exterior to this one okay and then down the sides and then when you get to the point where the gusset is too small see your clips again within the seam allowance. And squeeze them together. side so this technique I know I have seen other people do it for uh, example the uh, I think it's swoon that makes the Macy bowler bag which is a drop-in lining you can change it to be this kind and get the same effect 
this is just uh, a way to get past that drop in lining. I prefer to do it this way over a drop in lining any day, especially for a bowler style bag. It's just really hard um, unless you have a uh, cylinder machine, I find, where it's easy to get around to do it, but I do not. I don't even have a free arm. I do on my Juki, but I don't on my Titan, so. Okay, so again, we're going to start here. We're not going to sew in the middle here. We're going to do three eighths of an inch all the way around. It's best to do it with the panel against the machine. So when you get to this part here, you can pull this out of the way and sew along here. I'm not showing you this on my machine because um, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Anyways, I can't situate my camera just yet. I do have um, some gear coming, which hopefully I'll get better lighting in that room and I will be able to... Um, be able to show you what I'm doing from the machine better but yeah have the panel down uh, the main panel down and then when you get to here just pull this part back so you're only sewing on the lining fabric so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be back okay so the second side was actually easier so it does get easier the more you do it so you can see how we still have the exterior running free um, inside we have this hole for turning in the bottom um, what I would suggest doing is just up in these corners where the zipper panel meets, just kind of push into the corner and make sure that there is no hole up there. Just to make sure you met where you need to go and I am good. Okay, so the exterior, now definitely make sure that your zipper is open because we're going to need it for turning. Um, the exterior is going to go the same way except for we're not going to leave an opening in the bottom. Um, so... Now it's time to figure out, okay, so I am doing this side, which when it opens up will be on the back of the slip pocket. So I like to have my zipper pocket at the back of the bag. Um, it doesn't really matter one way or another. It's just a matter of figuring out where you want it to be. And I think this will do it. We will see if I'm right. Um, so how do I want to start this? Yes, so if I, if I take my front piece and I put it against this one, it's gonna flip open and then that's gonna be on the back. I think I have that right. Okay, so we're gonna put this together. I'm going to find my center, because again, I did not find my centers. And I'm just gonna trim off some of this excess foam that I have on here. Sorry housekeeping stuff I could have did off camera. Okay, so we're gonna put it together the exact same way. So match your centers on the bottom. Keeping your lining going that way. Okay, bring the corners up to this corner. You wanna make sure you pull your lining out of the way. We do not wanna sign. So now that was a close one. I ran out of um, memory on my phone. So I had to delete some stuff. So um, let's, where were we? Let's pick up. Okay, we were connecting these corners. Now, one thing I just noticed is when you come to these corners, you know how they kind of come across that way. And there's a little pointy part here. If you put it right in the middle like that and then clip it, it goes together so much easier. <laughs> So I wish I'd done that with the others. And it sits so nice and flat. Look, and then you can just, yeah, perfect. I'll show you here, one sec. And then they'll sit on top of each other. I mean, can you see that? Look at, perfect. So yeah, match that corner into that seam and all will be well. Okay, make sure you're putting that lining pushing that lining aside and only doing the exterior. This you'll have to be a little more careful, especially on the corners, because you don't want to have any um, nips or tucks in there. 
I know I had a few in my lining, but it's the lining. I don't, I'm not as picky with the lining, but the exterior, of course, you don't want to have that happening. Sometimes find the exteriors a little easier to work with just because of the foam interfacing. It's a little bit thicker and you can get it to lie flatter. Okay. And then down the sides. So close to being done. It's the home stretch, ladies. Home stretch, ladies and gents. We're almost through it, and I think it's going to be a great bag. Okay. Again, don't really need it, I don't think, but I'm just going to put a few snips in here. But it looks like it's going to fall into place pretty good. Look how perfect that goes in like that. I love it when things go well. Look at this. It's all fitting good. Other side. And we can celebrate that there will be no top stitching at the end of this bag. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but I didn't think it was going to go together this easy for this thing. Okay, so I'm going to take this to my machine. I'm going to lay it flat like this. Push this down, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around. When I get to the zipper panel here, you're going to pull this out of the way and just do the exterior fabric all the way around again. Come to the bottom. After that, you're going to come and you're going to put the other panel on this side and do the exact same thing. Make sure your zipper is open. I'm going to go do both off camera. And when I come back, we will turn the bag through. Yay, we're almost done. All right, we did it. Again, the top is, toughest parts for these corners. I can see mine isn't perfect here. Like it's kind of more rounded than pointy, but... I am just going to go with it. Um, I'm going to reach in and just make sure there's no holes in those awkward places. And I think we're okay. Make sure we caught everything all the way around. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go and take some of the bulk off of the corners. I'm just going to do the corners. Like so. I'm going to leave the zipper panel oh well, maybe not yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it um just do the corners one two three four more corners here so it's to trim the seam allowance all the way down i'm gonna turn it out and see how it looks without doing that and if need be i can always turn it back but i think it's just the corners will be fine um i'm not gonna worry about the lining okay moment of truth We'll get to see how well my stitching is. I'm a little nervous. Okay, so you're going to reach in and you're going to turn your bag out through the bottom. Did I use foam interfacing? So it's a little bit thicker. Um, it might have been easier to sew if it was um, Decoville Light or uh, Fleece. I just really like the loftiness of a foam bag. All right, I actually, well, let's see if we can get it through. I'm thinking I might have to go for a time lapse <laughs> to get this through, but actually, no, it's coming. We're good. We'll do it all live. There we go. Okay, so reach in and push out. All the corners. I don't have too many tucks. I did pretty good. Okay, I do have a few tucks just up in these corners here, but I think it's okay. It'll be fine. Okay.
poke out all your ends and your corners here. Okay, and then stuff the lining back inside the bag. Ooh, she's looking pretty cute. I need to, because I'm using um, nylon bonded, poly bonded, whatever. <laughs> have to. So you can see here, my corners aren't perfect, but they're not terrible. This bag is still sellable. So point out those corners there. It's actually pretty good. I'm pleased with it. I am, I am. Just want to make sure there's no top stitching and there is no top stitching. So push that in. This is only my second time working with waterproof canvas. I I think I prefer the cotton to be honest, but I do like that I didn't have to interface this. Oops. So you know what? She turned out pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. These aren't perfect here, but they're not terrible. This is this is good. I'm very very pleased with it. Okay. So now let's close up that bottom. So this is where you want to open up your zipper pocket and you want to pull your zipper pocket through the bag like this. This is where that open end was. And then you're going to reach inside that pocket and you're going to grab this opening in the bottom of the bag and pull it up and through the pocket like this and look at that now you can clip that opening in the bottom shut centers even match up which is a good thing okay so I'm gonna go and take it and sew that up I'm gonna stuff it back through the pocket into the bottom of the bag and then sew up the bottom of the pocket and then we'll come back and see what the finished result is Okay, so I have closed up the bottom of the bag and all, and I attached the straps. Uh, if you're doing it like the pattern, you would just have to snap them on with your, with your swivel clasp. But that's it, that's all. Yeah, it wasn't too bad at all. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this, chat, or this tutorial. Make sure you like and subscribe if you did. Uh, more tutorials coming up in the very near future. Thanks everybody, have a great day, bye.